Great, thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Jane, we can begin now. Oh, thank you, Said. Is everything okay on your yes, end? Yes, we're all streaming now. Sorry about that. No okay. worries. Good. We're just gonna jump right in because it's a long agenda. So the first, um, this is the um, November meeting of the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8. We have five applications to hear tonight. We will um, hear first from the applicant, then from the public, and then go into executive session and hear from the board members who are on the committee. We will formulate a resolution which will be presented to the full board at its Zoom meeting this coming Wednesday. With that, we're gonna get started. Just remember, we are here to vote on the context and appropriateness within the historic district only of each application. So number one is 21 East 90th Street, the expanded Carnegie Hill Historic District. Is the applicant here? Yes, okay. Confirm unmuting on your end. And you should be able to share your screen now. Thank you. So do you want to start? Yes. I'm trying to share our screen. There we go. Um, I'm Alex Zars. This is John Mead. Um, we're from Zars and Newdorf Architects. And we are working on 21 East 90th, the uh, top floor on the um, sort of uh, northwest corner of the building, which is the back of the building. And our site is right here. And our unit is the top two floors of this pavilion, and we'll go obviously into more detail. Um, I would like to read the uh, landmark description of the building briefly, if that's okay. Sure, we have a long agenda, but sure. Okay, okay, I will, I will, I'll just hit the highlights. Basically, okay. it's, uh, the architect is George Pelham, 1927. Um, it's a yellow brick building with a overlaid, uh, it's an Art Deco uh, style building by George Pelham with some medieval, if you will, um, terracotta and polychromed elements that are on the primary facades, which are uh, 90th and Madison Avenue. Uh, the backs of the building, the pavilions that face uh, west do not have the, um, those decorative elements generally. So I'll start with our slides here. So again, this, is our pavilion. This is actually the plane of the building on the top floor. That is what we're modifying, proposing to modify. This is the uh, floor below and then subsequent floors below. This is the other portion of the west facade that you'll see. And this is 90th Madison Avenue. This is the view from the west side of Fifth Avenue, Carnegie uh, Mansion. This is our site, and I can zoom in a bit here. This is our pavilion. This is actually the plane that we're working on. This is the Southern Pavilion, which is projecting uh, further west than ours. This is the corner tower of uh, 90th and Madison. And they're closer views. This is existing, this is all existing. Slightly different angle. This is standing on our terrace. So what we're proposing in this application is the removal of this chimney, expanding this masonry opening to include the space of this chimney. And we're going uh, another three courses of brick higher. And we've also proposed building, um, matching this in height and width but not in depth um, along this north wall here. And you'll see that in a moment. So you're proposing the removal of the chimney, expanding the... Opening. Okay. Yes. And, and going three courses of brick higher. Yes. <laughs> and we're also changing out the, you know, as you'll see in the details, we're changing out the door, proposing to change out the door system uh, <laughs> with a new uh, bronze toned steel uh, system. Thank you. Okay, so this is this is existing. <clears throat> this is really the best shot of it too. Um, and this is proposed. 
And I'll zoom in a bit on the existing so you have a better view of it. This is actually the corner tower again of our building. You can see a bit of the um, those little piers that are uh, terminating at some of the terracotta up at the top. Um, the building is generally an asymmetrical composition. This is the the other pavilion um, on the south side. There's a fireplace on their terrace, asymmetrically located uh, on the elevation. Our this is actually a fire a chimney from our uh, the floor below this top floor. This is the chimney we're proposing to move or uh, demolish and then rebuild. And this is what we're proposing. So this is the new location. This is the expanded um, metal, steel, bronze tone steel window I system. I mean, if you could just go, the chimney is being relocated to where? To this position here on the north wall of our building. Okay, thank you. It's being yes. repositioned to the north wall. Yes, I'll show you in plan. Okay. Yep. This is a view from um, between 91st and 92nd in Madison. And this is the wall where we're proposing to add the chimney. So it's the north facing. Um, Northwest corner, if, if you will. Northwest yeah. corner, okay. Yes. And we have a setback, uh, I'll, I'll show you the plans. This will be much clearer in a second. But these are the actual drawings. You can see the, the new location that we're proposing, the window system. So just as a reference before we get to the sections, this plane here is about 15 feet or 14 and a half feet uh, further east of this plane. Um, so it's set back quite a ways. Set back how many feet? About 14 and a half. Oh, okay. And I'll show you in a section as well. As a reference, this is the Carnegie um, Mansion. Uh, this is a sight line from Fifth Avenue, which is uh, really across the Carnegie Lawn, which is really the, the best uh, view of this. And you can see the sight line, a crenellated uh, terrace rail system is here. This is the plane of the wall that we're proposing to modify. And, oh, pardon me. The uh, dashed line is the southern pavilion, which is, if you will, towards you on the screen. Uh, it projects further. So there's no view of this from 90th Street when you're you know, walking down, heading west. So this is a, a roof plan. This is the existing chimney. This is the proposed. So this is the west wall. This is the north. So it's being changed from the west wall to the north wall. Exactly. And this is um, this is the existing plan. You can see the, the setback is about 14 and a half feet. Um, and this is the proposed window wall system. So we have two doors, one fixed panel of glass. This is the other larger chimney that's existing and we're not touching that. Um, the brickwork, any new brick that we're adding, replacing whatever um, for the chimney is uh, uh, matching existing brick. And it is part of an approved master plan that the building has for this um, structure. The building management has already gone through a master planning process. The shift. This is the existing masonry opening, a little bit over eight feet, eight feet, one and a half. And this is now eight feet, eight, I think 13, yeah, three quarters. It's 13 and three quarters feet wide? Oh, no, no, no. The width is. No, I'm so confused because how the new opening, what are the dimensions of the new opening? Okay. So here's the new opening is um, 17 and a half feet. Is that the width or the? That's the width. That is the full width. The ex the added um, opening is uh, six feet, seven inches. So, and that, so the height is six feet, seven inches. I'll just give her the measurement. No, I'm, I'm confusing you. I apologize. Um, horizontal dimensions, width. We've Why? added, 
yes, we've added, by removing this masonry, we've added six and a half feet approximately to the width. The right. Height. So it's now going to be 17 and a half feet wide. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And the two, yes. I. So then what is the height? Yes. The new height of the opening is eight feet, eight and three quarters inches. Eight feet, eight and three fourths inches. Yes. And when you say that, mean that includes the three courses of brick that you're adding yes. on. That's so you're raising the height, right? Is that correct? Yes. The whole. Yes. Okay. We're raising the the. You can see in this, these red dashed lines. This is the brick that's being removed. Right. Yes, and that's the the height of the opening is increasing here. Right. But is the overall height of the it the penthouse being increased? No, 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 no. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're just raising the height of the window. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. And this is the uh, side view. You can see we've added a new chimney on this plane. So this is the proposed. Okay. It matches the corbeling brick. Everything will match exactly. Okay. And this is simply a detail of the window system. Then I'll go back to the... I mean, one thing that's interesting when you're looking at this view, it's sort of like walking down the street next to like Brad Pitt. If I'm walking next to Brad Pitt, <laughs> no one's going to notice my outfit. When you're standing in front of the Carnegie, you don't really see much of the entourage beyond because this building is so animated and beautiful. Well, thank you. Is that this your presentation? It is. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. So I is anyone from the public here? I'm at Carnegie Hill Neighbors Low. Are you here? Oh, is here. Um, if you have a comment and you're a member of the public, you can raise your virtual hand. You can do that by going to the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and selecting raise hand. <clears throat> I don't see any members of the, oh, yeah. Well, we have somebody clapping their hands. <laughs> Lo, did you have something that you wanted to say? You can confirm it. <laughs> Okay, I don't think so, Jane. We can move on to the committee. Okay, very good. So why don't you call on everyone? We'll do this one alphabetical order. Okay. Elizabeth, confirm unmuting. Um, I'm afraid I really am not pleased with this. I think the, the symmetry of the existing is preferable to the blank wall of the uh, proposed, um, I think the proposed, uh, all those, all that glass higher and uh, <coughs> uh, is just not correct for that building. Uh, maybe other members of the committee can persuade me otherwise, but from what I see, I'm afraid I do not think this is a, a, an improvement or an appropriate change. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, uh, thank you. Is there a cornice on the original? Not at this level. There are on the primary elevations. Oh, because I am looking at the existing. Yeah. And for some ha some reason, it looks like more is happening up there. Oh, is it the awning? Is that? Oh, uh, there's a, is? yeah, there's, there's an, an awning. awning here. Yes, there's an oh, awning. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, as you look at this in a composition, the existing goes very well with the dormers that are in front of it of the mansion. As you move to the proposed, it's not the most horrible thing in the world, but it does not fit with sort of the rectangular, vertical rectangular <laughs> configuration 
of all of the entities that are around this. So to that extent, even though you're not, in, you're not increasing the dimensions, to that extent, it does stand out. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think it's the most horrible thing in the world, but um, what, what floor is this actually? What number floor? It would be the 14th floor. It's um, the, there's no 13th in the building. So technically it's, you know, if you're looking at the elevator, it so it's probably... about 130 feet off the street. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. That's my comment at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. you Alita. I really have no comments other than, excuse me, what Elizabeth and Michelle said, I'll have to see what my colleagues think before making a decision. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony? There we go. Okay. Um, I, I think this is absolutely fine. It is so far away from where it can be seen that it it does, as the architect has, as Alex has pointed out, it pales in into insignificance uh, based on what it's sitting behind. And I think that it is, um, uh, I just don't, I think sometimes we're asked to look at things that because of a blanket rule, we have to, but this is one that I think if there were a tall building on Fifth Avenue, we wouldn't even be able to see it. And because we can see it, we have to talk about it. But I think this is just fine. Thank you. Marco? Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you for the presentation, by the way. Um, would, when you put it in front of us, the two planes of the building, one forward, one backwards, you can see that they maintain some symmetry, and I think that is the complaint of Elizabeth. And you're absolutely right, too, that the magnificent building in the front, the Carnegie Hill, uh, cover or encapsulate or, or, or reduce the attention to the cacophony of the forms of the roofs. And um, uh, I'm still uh, thinking that I don't know if it's the right way or not, because when you present the proposal, the existing, and they propose, clearly you see you break the, 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 the symmetry of the, of the building, even though that there is in different planes. And uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, in having the, the, the exuberance of the Carnegie Hill building, I think they reduce any attention of the rules. And series of elements of the rules um, and shapes uh, probably allows you probably to let it pass this application. Thank you. Thank you. Christina? Um, I don't have any questions and I can support it. Thank you. Thank you. Kimberly? You see, that. <clears throat> um, I concur with Anthony's comments before. This seems harmless enough to me. Thank you. Uh, we have a raised hand from Lowe. Oh, let's let him speak. Thank you, Saida. Sure. Lowe? You're unmuted, Lowe. But we cannot hear you if you're speaking. Uh, maybe send me a message. Um, and then Jane and David. David, why don't you um, give your comments? Well, I can tell you that I have no intentions of persuading Elizabeth other than the way she feels. And I feel exactly the same. I think buildings have a certain integrity. I understand that uh, it's far away, but it is visible. And uh, I think that uh, I would not want to mess with the integrity of the design of this building. So uh, I cannot support it. Thank you, David. Does 
Um, is it possible for Lo to come on? Um, I can try again. Lo, confirm unmuting. Otherwise, you might have to leave and come back. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you if you're speaking. Well, I just am going to support the application for the reasons that um, David and Anthony stated. Or no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to support the application for the reasons that David stated. Sorry. I'm having technical problems myself, so I feel badly for Lowe since um, this is in Carnegie Hill neighbor's backyard. But you know, I think we're ready to go to a resolution and um, I don't think we can wait for Lowe. What do you think, David? Should we try to wait for Lowe? Or no, I that's think not. We have a very long, we have a very long agenda. Session. Yeah, I know. So right. I think I we're think just going to, does anybody want to formulate a resolution? Sounds like it's a move to disapprove. Right. So that's another reason I'm not about to wait for Lowe. Okay. Alita looks like, Alita? Oh, I'm I motion to disapprove. I'd like to make a resolution. Okay, Is there a second? Second I think we can Elizabeth. oh thank you, Elizabeth. I think we can go to a vote, um, Saida. Okay, one second. This is a move to disapprove. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Michelle? Yes. Alita? Yes. Anthony? No. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Marco? Yes. Christina? No. And Kimberly? No. Okay. <coughs> That's six in favor and three opposed. Thank you, Saida. Um, David, you're next. Next is 33 East 93rd Street, expanded Carnegie Hill Historic District, Hampton Spines, a Renaissance Revival building designed by Gilbert A. Challenger and constructed in 1889-90. Application is for approval of an existing sign. So if we can have the presentation. Oops. Um, you can confirm a meeting and share your screen when you're ready. Yeah, I'm, I have, Zoom keeps coming in and messing up my screen. I have to go out again and come back in, I think. Hold on a second. Can you see my screen? Uh, not as yet. Did you hit the share screen? I can't see the screen, so um, I may have to come back in again. I don't know. Zoom has Zoom has come in and messed up my screen twice tonight. It's not just you today, David. It's a few of us. All of us. All right, I'm, all I'm going to go out. I'm, it'll be quicker. I'm just going to go out and come back in again. Okay. Hold on. Oh, here I am. Okay. This time it worked. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. All right let me. <clears throat> okay. So is the architect here? For the sign. Hey, um, the presenter is here. I think I she's am... working on sharing her screen, though. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, you see the share screen prompt at the bottom? Yes. Okay. And then you selected the correct screen that you wanted to share? I did. It's saying my system preferences won't allow me. Hold on. Okay. Share. So sorry. <laughs> I do this all the time.
Okay, that should work. Can you see it now? Yes, we can yeah. see it. My apologies for the delay. Okay, so I am the VP of Operations for Knockout Beauty, and we are here today for your approval on an existing sign. Um, my first slide is our storefront located at 1316 Madison Avenue in the corner of 93rd Street. So we're going to go over a map that shows where the building is located within the historic district, a tax photo from 1940-1941, existing conditions of the building and the location of the sign, and photographs of the sign and the materials used. So we are located, as I mentioned, on 1316 Madison Avenue in the corner of 93rd Street. We have a tax photo from 1940 and 1941. So the historic details, the building was built in 1889 slash 1890. The original architect was Gilbert Schillinger and the building is an F.A. Wrangler house. The design details for the sign in question, which is um, at the corner of Madison Avenue and 93rd is 55 inches um, by 13 and it's three and one eighth thick with two aluminum posts and it's a PVC material. So key points for us for our sign, um, we are so honored to be in your neighborhood and we carefully thought this out and wanted to make sure that it wasn't obtrusive, obtrusive to your neighborhood. Um, we thoughtfully went with a black sign to ensure it was elegant and it blended in with the property, whether the ivy was there or not, so that the sign looked clean and elevated, um, whether the ivy was there or just the brick during the season where the ivy was not blooming. Um, our current sign is in the exact measurements is business critical. We are a traditional retail store um, and this is not a traditional retail space. And when we signed the lease, we were well aware that it was a landmark building and it was really important for us to respect that. Um, but it is something that's very critical to the success of our business for our clients um, or people walking by to easily access our business which leads us to our third point that we do wanna be a safe haven for men and women and children in our neighborhood. Um, we are open six days a week and we wanna make sure that we have they have visibility to us. Our sign um, does not obstruct landmark property. It is installed in the garden in front of the landmark property. And I did hear from my landlord today that they looked at the deed and the hedges are included in the deeded property. And we do believe that we have a unique, beautiful corner spot um, that won't be able to be replicated. So of course we don't wanna cause any more problems or issues in the neighborhood, um, but we do feel we have a unique corner spot that this won't be easily replicated throughout the historic district. And then we have a few more photos so you can see what it looks like at night and you can see what it looks like from all corners. Um, it beautifully blends in with the building. Um, and then here are some final photos of it from all angles of the corner. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> anyone... oh, wait, you know what? One more thing just for full transparency I would like to point out, just so you have a full picture. Um, we do have a small sign on our door. 93rd Street that you see here. So this is located on our door. It's 29 inches by 12. I don't want to make anything confusing. The main sign in question is the larger sign um, on Madison Avenue 93rd, but I wanted to give you full visibility to all of our signs. So we do have this nice black sign on our door entrance on 93rd Street. And then on Madison Avenue, we have a window decal. Um, so everyone knows we're located around the corner. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. I'll, I'll see to the questions. And the first uh, group that we're gonna ask for questions is uh, the public. I don't see any raised hands, David. 
Okay, so we'll go to the committee and we'll go in reverse alphabetical order. Okay, Marco. Ah, thank you, David. Uh, in general terms, I think is a, is reasonable the proposal, uh, and I think is beautiful too. The only thing I find untraditional in the in our district is the signage on the garden. Uh, is is not on the building, is on the garden. And that is completely that I unseen in our community work. And the other signs I think looks reasonable. And even in the, the first one, I, I think is, is well conceived. Uh, but I am still dealing with the with the signage. Uh, oh you don't have any other way to put it by the way. Uh, with the or the corner or in the planting area that you put the signage. Thank you. Ms. Snyder, you'll call for the people, please. Anthony? Sorry, I didn't realize I followed or preceded uh, Marco so closely. Um, I'm kind of of two minds about this. On the one hand, um, it it seems kind of um, inobtrusive, and um, I I we have a sign on the door, and we have a sign on the the window around the side, I guess, on Madison, um, and then this uh, sign planted in the garden. Um, the building is so overwhelmingly covered with um, ivy in the photos that it's a little hard to imagine. Um, and the sign as a consequence is kind of invisible. It's a little hard to imagine um, how, um, uh, how obvious it will be in the dead of winter. And, um, as I said, I'm kind of of two minds about this. On the one hand, it seemed kind of innocuous. On the other hand, signs planted in the garden at the corner um, strike me as kind of a scary precedent. Um, I don't know how many of them we have um, uh, already uh, in the neighborhood. Anyway, uh, that's all I can say right now this second. Thank you. Alita? Yeah, on the one hand, I like that it's not attached to the building and asking for permission to be on the building. But if it does set some kind of precedent, although this building in itself with the ivy and the shrub seems really different. Um, I don't know. I know you have a tricky problem there. I don't like the window decal, I have to say. Um, this, I'm, I'm probably not as opposed to it as as I might be, but I'm still I'm still thinking about it. So what we're looking at here is the corner going up, uh, going west on 93rd Street, right? So um, I see. So most, I see. Um, okay, well, I'm still thinking about it. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle? Thank you. So where is your main entrance to this business? Our main entrance is on 93rd. So what the picture we're looking at now is your main entrance. Correct. And the sign that you showed us that was in the window, that's on Madison? Correct. And and is that just a film on the interior of the window? Is Yes. So that, is that whole window there you can't look into the premises? You cannot. You can't really see in the premises at all. What kind of a business is this? So we're a beauty consultancy and retail store. Oh, so store. So you have product. Correct. Okay. You mentioned a third sign. Where is the third sign? That's on the door? Correct. And it's on the door that we're looking at at the moment? I can show you. There you go. So, but this door is behind the sign that is planted on posts in the greenery. Is that correct? It's not really directly behind it. It's to the left of it. And, and there's a path to this door? 
Yes. So it seems to me from the visuals that we have that the sign on the post in the greenery is actually blocking the, the sign on the door. Your concern is that if that mounted sign was not there in the greenery that you wouldn't see the sign on the door? Is that you, your concern? If the sign on the greenery is not there, you would not know we existed until you were at really the door closest to nine, like 90 West and 93rd. You wouldn't know we were there if you were on Madison Avenue or even on the right on the corner of Madison because Avenue. Because of the height of the hedges? Because you can't see into the store, really. You this this the, the door chain isn't blocking the door at all. The door's like X amount of feet to the left. All right. What I'm trying to get a handle on here is, of course, everything looks so overgrown. And if the size of those hedges are in control of the landlord or you or whoever, um, it just seems to me if they were if the hedges were modified that you would see the front door. So the Wait. signs right here with the hedges, can you see how I'm circling with yes, my- Yes, I do see it. Yes, I do. And then the door's all the way over here. So if you're on Madison Avenue- Oh, I see, I even see. Even here, you would not know we existed and we are a traditional retail store. All right, it's not our, this, this does not look attractive to me. I mean, if we took this sign, in and of itself, not where it was placed. It's an attractive looking sign. But sticking out of hedges like that, whether there's full foliage or not, to me is not a, a, um, an attractive situation. Um, I'm wondering, and I'm not, and we're not here to design number one, and nor am I a fan of flags or fabric signage on the side of a building. But I think in this particular case, if it followed the rules and regulations of a historic district, which I think are about 14 inches, or you know, you know better than I, that I think almost a, a flag on the side of the building would almost be uh, more attractive. As I look at this, as I said, I can't design it for you. But my first reaction as I look at this is this is sort of like sticking out like a sore thumb, you know, jumping up from greenery. And then when the greenery isn't there, what's this going to look like? So I'm, I understand your dilemma, but I'm not completely happy with the solution. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth? It, I live near this building. Uh, and quite honestly, it really doesn't look like a building. It's a great mound of vegetation. And so it's hard to say, you know, what we n normally do is we look at the architecture, but you can't find the architecture when you're on that street. Uh, I don't find the sign uh, inappropriate here. Uh, everything is dwarfed by greenery. Um, the, the one sign that I'm not crazy about is the sign, the lettering in the window. Um, but uh, I, uh, I, to me, this is, and from looking at it physically uh, through the leaves, uh, it uh, seems pretty acceptable to me. Thank you. Uh, Jane and David, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, Alita raised her hand again. Do you want me to pause and hear Alita or continue with the role? Alita has a comment she wants to make. That's okay. Okay. Thanks, David. I actually have a question. What happens if for some reason the greenery comes off the building? Is there, is there, um, has thought been given to that? And, and thank you for allowing me to ask. I think the answer to that, Alita, is that uh, you'll have to think about this sign with and without the ivy. Okay, thanks, David. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kimberly. 
Thank you, Saida. Um, I'm going to support this application. I appreciate that, as has been mentioned, this sign is not being attached to the building. It's not altering the facade of the building in any way. And also compared to other retail spaces that have been presented before us, there's no lighting that could cause distraction and things like that. I think that given the vegetation on the side of this building, this is the applicant's best option. So I'm going to support it. Thank you. Christina? Um, I can, <clears throat> excuse me. Am we can I hear you. Muted? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I cannot support it. I live a block away from this building. I walk by it every day. It does stick out like a sore thumb. It is obtrusive. It's not invisible. Um, it's, it's right, you know, you just walk there and it just jumps out at you. And then the door is down by an angle. You can see into the store. There are windows. I look in there a lot. And um, I, I just, it's not, it's not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Jane and David? Well, I'll speak first. I actually agree with Christina. And I also think that Michelle's idea of having, um, I don't know whether you'd call it a flag, but a banner is more appropriate within the historic district. Something set onto the wall that would advertise the shop. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I admit to being of two minds on this one. Uh, because with or without the ivy, the sign is separate, it's independent. When I think of some of what's been done to some of the other buildings on Madison Avenue, this is uh, so subdued, even though it does stand out, which is the whole point of a sign. <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, uh, when I look at it, uh, it just doesn't feel right. So I guess I'm not going to support it. And I think we're ready for a resolution. Michelle? Motion to disapprove as presented with the whereas is reflecting our commentary. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Jane seconded it. Okay. Okay, so Saida, if you will please take the vote. Thank you, Bertha. One second while I unmute everyone. So this is uh, a yes or a no. This is a resolution to disapprove. Okay, Elizabeth? No. Michelle? Yes. Alita? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anthony? No. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Marco? Uh, yes. Uh, Christina? Yes. Kimberly? No. Uh, Alita? And, and me. I'm sorry? Me. I passed. So oh. okay. thank you. I so agree. I would say yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The disapproval passes with six in favor. And three opposed. Thank you. So can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you. We're moving right along to 20 East 76th Street, the Upper East Side Historic District. Is the applicant here? Hello. I'm Todd Poisson, BKSK. Okay, so you're going to make the presentation. I will be my uh, one of my staffers going to be sharing their screen. Will Russell. 
he's with us tonight. And, and if you can unmute also, unmute Harry Kendall. He's one of my partners. He'll be, we'll be presenting this together. Hello, everyone. I've been successfully unmuted. And <clears throat> Harry, Harry's going to introduce us, and then I'll. I'll take it. <clears throat> Harry, yes. you want to jump in? Hello, everyone, and thank you so much to the community community board members for spending your time and for hearing us. We're talking this evening about the Surrey Hotel. Uh, I, I'm sure you all know it well. It's on the south side of. Um, East 76th Street between Madison and Fifth Avenue. And it has been a hotel since it was built. You'll see in some of the early brochures that it was a, a residential hotel with um, apartments on the upper floors when it was built. Uh, in the interim between then and now, it, uh, it became all hotel rooms. Part of our proposal is to change it back to that hybrid or residential hotel form. Um, you'll see on this introductory page from the existing to the proposed, it, it retains its form and its details by and large. It's all, we see this as a very good news for the neighborhood that a, a, a hotel facility that closed is now poised to reopen. Um, the, you will be going through a number of pages showing our careful consideration of the details that exist it has had some changes over the years, some of which were changing back more to the way it was, some of which were tinkering to with to uh, enable some of the original details to be better appreciated. And um, we have a very, very scrup scrupulous or rather concerned with the details um, client that Todd will talk more about. And we'll be going through in the following order um, all of it's consequential, but it starts with the most consequential, what changes we make to the street facade. Then um, we part of making a, a hotel function today. Um, this one, as you know, closed during the during the pandemic. Um, is, is proper mechanical servicing and, and ventilation. So there, there's some changes in the um, in the rooftop. You'll see that the the lot line walls, east, south, and west. Uh, are all changing somewhat. It's a combination of um, a, a modern hotel has a larger bathroom than the hotel in, in the 1920s. And um, some of the lot line windows are bathrooms. And as we expand the bathrooms, the windows locations aren't, um, aren't appropriate. Um, we're, 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 you'll see we're working hard to maintain an original pattern. And then we end with a, a really inconsequential thing, but worth talking about as, as every detail is um, in fill of some um, some courtyard space. So um, Todd will talk first about our our client because it's a it's a reassuring for us and we think for you part of this proposal that we're that a very serious and experienced hotel operator is uh, taking charge here. Well you know we're interested in the context and appropriateness within the historic district. So um we don't want to spend too much time on this aspect. Sure. Uh, really yeah. Thanks, Harry. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll go quickly through it that we do have a lot of little things to talk about that Harry just mentioned. Please interrupt me whenever you feel the need. Uh, as Harry mentioned, the, 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 the new owner of the hotel has beautiful properties, historic properties in London. This page is London properties. Um, the next page is the actual hotel operator who will be, involved Corinthia Properties, who own absolutely exquisite properties, historic properties throughout the world. This is their first United States property. So we're really excited to work with them. Um, and as you can see, they, they take incredible care. So does the, the building ownership as well. So that partnership is really exciting for us uh, to partner with to, to um, bring back the Surrey Hotel. Next is our location in the Upper East Side District. Uh, we are at 20 East 76th, as Harry said, at the south corner at East 76th and Madison Avenue. Uh, it was built as a 16-story apartment hotel. Next. So in 1926, the brochure even advertised it as a residential hotel, and that is the proposal now um, to bring back 
larger apartments upstairs, the top five floors are being proposed to become residential condominiums. The rest of the hotel below from second floor, or sorry, third floor through the 10th floor will remain hotel units. Um, and the first floor is getting a little programmatic change, first and second floor, a little pro programmatic changes that affect the, set, the, the, the street facade, which we will show shortly. Next. So the street facade mo modifications, next. Oh, sorry, Well, can you go back to the 1926 brochure? Just something that's gonna come up uh, in a minute. The lower left of the brochure drawing, you can notice that there's an asymmet asymmetry to the ground floor. Um, this is important because it no longer exists and it's something that we want to bring back. Uh, in 1926, there, was a, uh, it, there happened to be a doctor's office on the ground floor. There's two single windows to the left of the main entrance, while on the right side, there's two double windows. So that, that kind of asymmetrical DNA is something we'd like to restore, along with some of the historic stonework that was removed about 12 years ago in the previous renovation. Next. And then Todd, to interrupt before we move on, um, feast to yourself for a moment on the uh, rendering in the center. You can see that the, right. originally the building did not have an awning. In the interim, it, it first acquired a, a canvas uh, awning, and then it acquired a, a a suspended marquee. Um, Thanks, Harry. Yeah, that's important because part of our proposal will be to uh, dismantle the marquee and modify it a bit so you could see this uh, stonework better uh, as one approaches. So you'll see that in a minute. Thank you for pointing that, reminding me, Harry. Uh, the beautiful stonework that is intact on the building, just it's behind a, a marquee that kind of slams up against it currently. On the right are the plans. Um, 1926 hotel plans that are essentially what will be repeated in the renovation. And upstairs, we're bringing back the larger units. Next. So on the, the street facade, the yellow uh, are marks where we plan to uh, do some modification. You can see on the ground floor, there's some yellow. And up on 14 and 16, the top of that building, uh, it's more minor. And on the right is the proposed condition, which we will talk about more in detail because it's a, a small drawing. We're going to zoom in on each of these things in a minute. On the left is a 1979 photo where you see, and it was also apparent in the 1940 tax lot drawings, in, in the original condition of, in 1926 were double hung windows, six over six light double hung windows. That is part of the proposal here for all four sides. We, want, we are proposing to bring back the double hung six over six windows on all four sides of the building, including this street facing front main facade. And then the middle photograph uh, from in 1940, you can see that there's a subtle color change between the frame, the window frames. The lower three floors, part of the kind of limestone base section are much lighter frames than the windows above. From fourth floor up, there are darker painted window and below or lighter. And we intend to repeat that pattern. On the right side, you can see some paint chips. They, they're a little dark on the screen, but the, the idea is that the, the lower two floors are lighter than the upper section of the building. The upper section of the building is a painted Durinar uh, metal window. They're all double hung metal windows, painted metal. Uh, up top is a what's called a uh, Quaker bronze, dark darker, quicker bronze. And the lower floors are a lighter painted bronze on the second and third floor. And the ground floor is, in, we're proposing an actual stained bronze. So a real bronze, but a stain mm -hmm. on the metal to create- so You're a, actually using three colors of paint, the ground floor, the next two floors, and then from the fourth floor up. Correct, three, okay. three colors. The first two are intended to uh, speak to each other a little more closely in the lighter range. The lowest one is a stain. So there's a stain and then a paint. But there is a differentiation. I'm not gonna go into every yep. single detail, but I just wanna make that point that there's a differentiation. Correct. Okay. Okay, let's start zooming in onto the ground floor next. So the existing ground floor in the photograph, the existing three, bottom three floors, in fact, um, in the photograph on the upper part and then repeated as a drawing, just a straightforward drawing of the existing conditions on the bottom. And you could notice that the asymmetry has disappeared uh, or, or it 
one of the single windows has disappeared in 2010, was approved to be a double window there on the left. Uh, the two flanking doors to each side of the main entrance had received uh, a, a fixed awning, which blocks the view partially of this beautiful, of beautiful stonework oculus that we want to uh, bring back. So we're, we're proposing to remove those two fixed awnings uh, in our proposal, which you'll see in a second. Next, we're going to zoom back just a second on the timeline to remind everyone, 1926, there were two single windows on the left, the two flanking doors at the center entry bay, and two double windows to the right. There was always a service door, a single service door on the far left that's, that we're proposing to remain. Uh, the 2009 elevation is, is right before uh, the 2010 approval to change it into the existing condition. But the only difference really between 1926 and, 19, and 2009 was perhaps the awning from 1979 and that close-up photo may, may or may have not have been there still. And the windows have been replaced with no mountains. Next. Nope. Sorry. Uh, one before this, there we go. Okay, so now to the existing elevation uh, and the red dotted lines, the red dotted rectangle is the location of the 1926 window. And you can see on the bottom drawing is we're proposing to use that, reanimate that single opening, but create a door opening instead. So we're proposing two doors, a door from the first, so from left to right, the service door remains as is, the single window becomes a single door. The next double window becomes a single door to reanimate that 1926 asymmetry at the ground floor. The two flanking doors at the to left and right of the main door remain there two, the two fixed awnings go away, uh, but those two doors become fixed panels, fixed windows. They're not, they're no longer functioning they would be no longer functioning doors. And you'll see why in a second with the, the, uh, the, the floor plan, but the proposal is to fix those doors, but maintain the masonry opening as they are. Then the next, the, to the right, the double windows remain, the flower boxes are all removed. And then lastly, the double windows become double doors. Transoms above glass for the doors and the, the solid panels on the bottom of the doors. So there's an idea of recollecting that there were windows here at one place at one time, especially on the left with the asymmetry, the, um, recalling the 1926 configuration. The next page is the same drawing on the bottom, but now just complemented with the plan to explain the doors. On the left, the two on the left are, the first one is the, is a service door that is actually the cellar egress door. The next one is a re is a door for egress from the top of the building or the upper floors. It's a reconfigured fire stair to get uh, modern egress to the front facade. The next door is the entrance to the restaurant, which flanks the lobby. Then the lobby is in the middle, still accessed through the double doors at the center. And then to the far right, the double windows become double doors for a access to um, street to a sidewalk cafe that the lounge and restaurant operator would like to um, create. Next page is now just simply left, and left to right again, zooming in a little more from left to right, the service door, the cellar egress is on the left, it's to stay. The photograph is existing condition and then the rendering is the proposed. So the pair on the left is the farthest east condition with a single door and a single window becoming a single door. The next photograph paired with its rendering are the, the double windows that in 1926 was a single window being proposed to be a single door in the original windows masonry opening extended down to the sidewalk, restored stone, where in 2010, the stone was removed to create a double window, restore the stone um, and add a signage plaque for the restaurant entrance. We're also pointing out in the red areas, the red dotted areas are restored, other stonework restored where there are current mechanical openings through the stonework. 
that happened sometime between 1970s and in, in, in 2009. It was already existing in 2009. Those mechanical openings are being removed and stone will, restoration will fill those gaps. Next page. So this is the marquee. We'd like to tinker with the marquee in a way to expose that beautiful stonework that Harry reminded us of earlier. Uh, right now, the photograph on the left, the timeline is on top. We're in 1926, there was no canopy, no marquee blocking the stonework. In the 70s, there was a canopy uh, that with, with posts down to the sidewalk. The existing condition approved in 2010 was, a mar was this marquee that attaches itself to the stonework. Uh, what we'd like to do is just tinker with this, the glass, reconfigure the sloping glass and the marquee with less mullions. And so you could just simply see the stonework better. Um, and then you can see that in the renderings on the right. And with the proposed stained bronze center doors with an ornamental metal screen in front of the glass of the two doors. Next. From a distance, the marquee appears the same exact. In fact, we intend to try to keep the, 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 the outriggers uh, literally and just repaint it to match the, to, with a color that matches the stained bronze of the ground floor work. Next. And then moving to the right, the flanking doors, both right and left of the main entrance become fixed panel, but the same masonry opening. And then finally, the last two paired windows become double doors. Uh, there's other various appurtenances and grills on the facade that we're cleaning up, proposing to clean up some electrical conduits, et cetera, that we're stripping off and replacing so that, that kind of like drain hole, drain overflow, drain hole in the facade on the right uh, with a new cap, with a new bronze uh, perforated cap. Next. So now look, lifting our eyes up to the 14th and 16th floor, there were some other yellow marks uh, on the grant on that master plan diagram earlier, Six, 14 and 16. Um, upper right are the yellow, you can see the 14 and 16 demarking the, the floor level. So the existing condition is the photograph upper left and drawn in the upper right. The proposed condition of both are below, immediately below each. So the yellow, looking at the, 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 the five yellow spots in the upper right drawing, on the upper left yellow, you see two windows, a smaller window that's, asymm that's off kind of the pattern. We're proposing to pair that up with a, a more typical double pair window that you see throughout the building that's in the drawing below and restoring the brickwork to match ex the existing adjacent uh, brick accordingly uh, where that window is being removed. Same in the symmetrical condition on the right. So the 16th floor has two um, small windows being removed and double windows being proposed to match the pattern of the building elsewhere. And then on the 14th floor, there's a terrace, setback terrace, left and right. On the left, there's a, currently there's a single door flanked by two smaller double hung windows, uh, not historic pattern. We're proposing to replace that simply with two terrace doors, French doors. Again, you can see all the six over six million windows to match the, the, the proposed uh, window pattern everywhere. And then on the right, a somewhat symmetrical idea there, replacing two windows with two terrace doors. And then the far right yellow mark are two doors that are being proposed to become windows. <laughs> so, so creating a symmetrical um, 14 and 16, in other words. Todd, this sheet may be a good sheet to orient people about, even though it's not colored yellow, about the 1970s um, greenhouse portion that was we we're, were taking away. Uh, good point. So in the upper left photograph, you can see, and Will, maybe you can even point to with the cursor, um, there in 1970s, late 1970s, that black, that dark, Thing in the upper right of the photograph on the upper left, but the upper right of the photograph, oh, that see. piece was added in the 1970s as one of these Department of Buildings approved, you know, greenhouses. Um, it's flush with, it still remains there as an existing condition. It's flush with the bulkhead. You'll see in the next chapter, when we talk about mechanical reconfigurations up on the roof, we plan to remove that 
and push back the mechanical pen. That's a, it's a mechanical um, area. Uh, that's a screen that open to the sky with mechanical units behind it. Uh, we're proposing to move that wall back and, and rebuild it as brick to match these adjacent brick. And you'll see that in a minute, but to, to kind of regain the symmetry of those shoulders, those kind of broad shoulders of the, the, the bulkhead. We're gonna kind of reclaim that imagery. Next, which will be in the next chapter. So that's a good segue. This is now the rooftop mechanical units and elevator bulkhead extension. Next. So from left to right is a timeline. 1926 is on the left. On top is the plan of the penthouses, of, of the penthouse. And the bottom is the plan of the roof. So 1926, far left. Next column is the 1970s. And you can see that yellow area. Compare that yellow area to the drawing to the left in 1926. So they, they added that greenhouse in the 1970s and 80s, it was an extension of that uppermost apartment. Um, in existing, otherwise known as 2010, the next column, the roof was removed and it became an open to the sky mechanical pen. Uh, but it still has that greenhouse wall at the front that you saw in the photograph. What we're proposing is to push back the piece that's asymmetrical with the, and to reveal the shoulder uh, of the bulkhead. And you'll see that in the, in maybe be clear in the three-dimensional drawings next. So next, where we talk about the volumes and, and sight lines from the street. But first, this is the plan for the mock-up. It's in, it's in progress. And we had hoped to have photographs for you tonight, but it's not quite built uh, to the right uh, specifications, but we are confident that it will reflect these renderings that you'll see following these pages. But the brown ribbons here are the mock-up which will emulate the future bulk. Um, the red line, the dotted red line you can see in the axon represents how we're going to push back that greenhouse wall. What is now a greenhouse wall gets pushed back to, to reveal the symmetrical shoulders of the the bulkhead um, and it becomes a brick wall. So it's not part of the mock-up because the, the, the greenhouse is still there. Next. So views, we're gonna walk around the whole building. This building is much taller than its neighbors on all four sides. So we're gonna take a tour around. We're gonna start on Madison Avenue now. We're, we're standing north of the site, looking back south on Madison Avenue. Uh, we're going to start here and then we're going to loop around. We're going to go up 76 into Central Park, back to 75th Street and back uh, to Madison. So here you could see upper left is that same photograph from the last chapter with the greenhouse and the dark thing, the, the, the zoom in close up. The rendering um, shows that that piece has been pushed back slightly and there's a little, uh, uh, maybe zoom into that, uh, Will. Uh, this is from far away, but this is what one is what we're proposing to see from far away, pushing back that wall with brick and the mechanical units are behind that. Let's go zoom back out. We're also proposing to extend the parapet on its the left side of that bulkhead as well, which is not visible from the, 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 the rendering on the right. You could see neither of those changes are visible on the um, when you get that close to the building. Next, we're gonna walk away. Next page, we're gonna be even farther away from the building where you really see the, the roofscape. Um, and if one were to zoom into that rendering, let's zoom into that rendering. Well, that first one on the left, thank you. You could see from far away, there, the, the parapet has risen and the, the brick on the right has been pushed back. Let's zoom back out. Um, once you get to 79th Street, the building is only partially visible, and we render that view. Next, we're going to now be on 76th Street, looking back towards the building, towards the east. So we're looking east now, west of the building, uh, where you see the mechanical unit has been pushed, the mechanical bulkhead, that we're, the, the new mechanical piece has been pushed back. So let's zoom in, actually 
for a second on the photograph on the left, where one can see the existing greenhouse thing, which is that darker thing, is blocking some beautiful brick detail. It's like there's an arch brick detail there that's on the front as well that you might've noticed. It's also on that side, but you can't see it because of that 1970s greenhouse that became a mechanical bulkhead. What we'd like to do now, just span, uh, uh, yeah, nudge your way over to the right. We're pushing it back. So we're gonna reveal that, that brick detail. This is the angle of this photograph, maybe on the, the one on the right. We're pushing back the bulkhead, the mechanical piece, so to reveal that brick archway, and then the, the it's the bulk of the mechanical is pushed back south. Next, maybe zoom out and pan to the right. A little clearer here. The arches are a little clearer here. The rendering is a little truer to truer exactly to the photo angle. Maybe this will make more sense. Let's zoom in here. You could see on the left how that mechanical thing is blocking a bit of that beautiful brickwork. We're proposing to push back the mechanical pan over to the right so you could see more of the brick detailing. Um, zoom back out. Now we're going to go all the way to Central Park. Through the trees, you can see that same area on the left, it's kind of the same view. We've, we've just now backed up ourselves way into the park. And if you zoom in, you could see that same relationship of seeing the, the brick arch and the mechanical bulk pushed back. The view on the right is farther south in the park, now looking southeast, sorry, northeast. Um, and you could see both the mechanical piece that's been pushed back, the me mechanical enclosure that's been pushed back, and also on the right of the rendering, what's noted as the elevator bulkhead extension. So this is the only view you can see this. We're extending the elevator bulkhead four feet to accommodate a larger modern cab. Um, you, but you can see how the, the, the view is really through the trees from a great distance, from a pretty far distance in the uh, park. Next, we're now going to go back into the grid on 75th Street, looking north, there we go. Um, and then kind of starting at the top and then going down and around, you're just walking east on 75th, looking north. Uh, no change in, the, in these views to any of the sight lines, except on the right, um, you zoom into the rendering, the lowest right rendering, zoom into that enlarged parapet and put your cursor on the enlarged parapet so people know what we're talking about. So that parapet's been increased three feet tall with brick to match existing. Uh, it's replacing actually a, a, what it is existing as a pipe railing, a pipe railing on that bulkhead. We're just proposing to replace the pipe railing with a brick parapet to disguise the mechanical, uh, some um, condensers that are on that roof that are not visible because of the extended parapet. Let's zoom back out. And the last page of this chapter is we finish again, find ourselves again on Madison Avenue, just now south of the building looking north. Next page. There we go. So now just three more views to, to, to end where we started, uh, looking at the eastern flank of the building, the south and the eastern flanks of the building, no changes to the sight lines on any of these uh, views. So the next chapter. Um, before you leave this chapter, just so I'm clear, since I'm gonna be writing the resolution and I'm not gonna go into the extensive, extensive detail, but in general, you're pushing back the existing greenhouse wall and you're recreating it in brick. Am I correct? It's gonna be a brick wall now. Correct. And behind it will be the mechanicals. And because you are pushing it back, the beautiful brick arches will be more visible than they were previously. Correct. Is that sort of a summation? And it's and then you are extending the elevator bulkhead by three feet. Four feet. The Four parapet. Feet, sorry. The parapet was three feet. Yeah. The parapet's so, three feet. The elevator bulkhead is four feet. Correct. Okay. And now you're going to discuss the um, the lot line. Correct. Windows? So now we. Okay. So now the lot line wall modifications, and this is 
So we're proposing, as we said, um, replacement, window replacements, which by the way, a lot has been approved at staff level, but we're gonna explain wall by wall what I mean by that. So this, we're gonna start with the east wall, then we're gonna to go to the south and finish with the west. So the east wall, 1940 tax lot photo on the upper left, the existing condition drawing first, then the middle drawing is what was approved um, last summer for straightforward replacement, all six over six double on windows, just replacing all of them where they already were. In the interim, as plans change and evolved with our operator and, and, and owners, um, we've modified that plan on the upper right to become the upper right drawing, which maintains the pattern, but proposes some infill windows and five new windows. So Will, you wanna just, just put your cursor on those five new windows in the upper right. They're all in the upper zone with the new residential larger apartment zone um, facing east. So we're taking the existing pattern and as it gets up to that level, kind of bifurcating, creating kind of like a, a, a pitchfork of that last more northernmost line and it becomes um, two and then there's two um, east. Uh, we're going to show a detail in a second. Next page is kind of a, a rendering and photograph of the same eastern wall before and after with a little detail of the infill. So the infills are meant to be, um, we're proposing to infill them with match to, brick to match the existing adjacent walls and to maintain the cast stone sills as a, to recollect the pattern. So the, the, the wall still tells the story of what was there. You could still see the pattern, the historic pattern um, and then in this case, five new windows. Next is the south. So same idea here on the south. Um, in the tax lot photo, it's just a little fragment of the south wall in the upper part of that tax lot photo. The existing condition, the staff approved repl straightforward replacement of those four lines of the, the, this lot line, which is the, the, the most forward section of that drawing. The, the center section of the drawing is the most proud section on the lot line. The rest are courtyard windows in the background. And then our proposed condition on the right, we're proposing to add two rows or two columns of single punched windows in the upper left to complement that, that the, the Western line, their proposed great rooms or primary bedrooms uh, in that zone for the condominium units and giving them Southern views and Southern light. Um, next page is the same condition rendered with a view before and after. Sorry, it's taking a little time to load. Oh, there we go. Um, so the same, the historic patterns maintained with two more rows towards the west. The next sheet is now the west. We finish with the west facade. Tax lot photo on the, uh, sorry, existing photo. There's no tax lot for this one. Existing photo on the left, existing drawing, straightforward replacement. And then what we're here tonight about, the, the, the drawing on the right, uh, we're proposing to pair up the first row, which are the, the ones closest to the street, to allow views from those living rooms and those, those front guest rooms, views to Central Park, closing up some middle, smaller windows that are no longer uh, no longer fit with the new bathroom plans that Harry mentioned, larger bathrooms cannot accommodate those, uh, and then replacing the rest of those on that facade. And then three more new ones to uh, continue the line that's next to the chimney, to the right of the chimney and two to the left of the chimney. Next page are, is the view of this same drawing. Um, photograph on the left, view on the right, pairs of windows next to the left of the chimney and a single new row to the right of the chimney. So the next chapter and the, the last chapter, um, as Harry said, they, now these are entirely out of view, they're in the back. Um, we're infilling two air wells, left and right. So we'll just do this quickly. Um, 
The first one, this is on the east. So there's a key map on the upper left. The yellow is an existing air well that goes down to the cellar, open to the sky, down to the cellar. We're proposing to fill it up in the cellar and ground floor to essentially extend what's already a second floor mechanical terrace. So that mechanical terrace, that, which is in orange in the lower right plan, just becomes an L shape instead of a rectangle with a hole next to it as an air well. So the yellow air well, whatever's yellow on the page gets filled up uh, both on the um, cellar and the ground floor, existing floor plan uh, and proposed floor plans to the right for both the first floor and second floor. The drawings on the lower left represent a proposed uh, visual screening of neighbor condensers on the neighbor roof. And that's gonna be more understandable, I think in the next page, but keep that drawing in mind that we're looking at the lot line condition in the area well. So in, the, in that air well. To the left is the proposed condition, putting a visual break um, between a visual screen to screen those mechanical units that you see in that photograph. So those are on top of the neighboring building. The screen can be attached to our property's party wall. So it's not, so in the section on the right, thank you for pointing that out well, is the darker part of that vertical wall and section is a party wall. And thus we can attach a screen to it without attaching to a neighbor's property in order to screen, visually screen their mechanical units from our guests. And then you could also see in those sections, filling in that air well uh, in the cellar and ground floor. There's some excavation to, to do to align the cellar with the existing cellar of the, with, in the air well. Next is the, now we're on the west side. There's a similar air well that goes currently open to the sky from cellar up. It's a, this one's a little smaller, a little narrower. You see it in, in plan in yellow, in the key plan upper left, in the axon lower left. We're proposing to fill this one up and it grows a little bit to accommodate a stair for a service stair to connect some kitchens. Um, but the, the good news here is what is now a mechanical terrace cluttered with mechanical units that are grandfathered in there, they wouldn't be legal with the new application now because it's a, it, um, in the backyard uh, zoning. Uh, we're cleaning all those away uh, to, to enable the spa that's on that floor to have a little amenity terrace, a quiet <laughs> terrace out on the back there. The next page shows this little, in, in, in sections. Again, that little skinny air well to the lower left section becomes just absorbed into the rest of the cellar and ground floor with the stair poking up um, to the second floor in this case. So the Eastern well just gets filled up cellar and ground floor. The Western well gets filled up to the second floor with a stairwell. And I think that's it. Well, I have to say it's- Oh, a sorry, sorry. There's one more page. <laughs> we wanted to just show a master plan for exterior nighttime lighting. Of course, there's ambient lighting in the city streets. There's the, 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 there'll be plenty more lights around, but just to, to focus on proposed surface mounted LED strip lights that are not visible from the street because they're so, they're the small profile. They sit on a little, the stone entablatures of the facade. Um, and we'd like to kind of just pick up the limestone detailing. So at the very top, it's to highlight the limestone coins of the setbacks, just two left and right. And then on the third floor, above the third floor, um, to rake the brick coins uh, a bit. And then on the third floor to highlight what is limestone, limestone medallions. And then second floor, just on the sills to, to highlight the masonry openings. And then likewise on the ground floor in the portals of the new doors to have down lights and then to keep the marquee lights as they were and the flag lights as they exist. Now that's it, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, it's so amazing. I mean, I'm ready to approve as presented, but let's see if anyone from the public is present. Present, but don't 
No one, yeah, Saida? No comments, no. Okay. Well, then I think we can go to the committee and we can now start with Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth? again. Cool. Thank you very much for this not exactly brief presentation. Uh, it's an ex extensive uh, restoration. And I must say, I think it is a magnificent job that you've done. I, I think it proves what we on this committee have been saying every time until we're hoarse, that uh, the multi-paned windows that were installed originally are necessary to protecting the character buildings of this time. They give it its character. They give it its texture. And I think you've done a magnificent job. And uh, surprise, surprise, I'll support it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Michelle? Excellent presentation. Very well done, very well explained. So I thank you for that because it was extensive and yet we could follow it. So I thank you. Let me just question you a little more because I must have missed this, but in the pictures that you have on the screen now, the little side building, the little appendage, what exactly is that in both the existing and the proposed? What are the materials? What, what is it? How did it come to be? So that's not our building. That's a three-story neighbor that fronts on uh, to Madison Avenue to the left. It's just a it's a beautiful historic three-story market uh, commercial building that's intact. Uh, it's now it's currently Compass's offices, uh, the, the real estate uh, company. It is also limestone and beautifully rendered in limestone and and cast stone um and details on the that second floor but we're not touching that that's not part of our okay I, it, it sure doesn't look like it's part of yours but the fact that it was there and that you're showing you have it as existing and then you have a proposed rendering so now i'm understanding you're just talking about your building so the changes that were made in that little three-story structure that you're calling proposed rendering are in fact already there, have been approved and have been built and don't belong to you. Correct, yes, oh. we, should, we should update that rendering to look more like the photograph. But yeah, we're, we're showing context for both left okay. and right in our rendering, but just the hotel portion is what is in the application, just the, the okay. taller. Okay. Well, you've done a beautiful job and um, I, I'm delighted to see, you know, the divided, lights back was six over six. I mean, that's just makes all the difference in the world. I think the lighting looks good. You didn't cover signage though. What are you doing about signage? Is it gonna okay. say Surrey Hotel or is the, what's that about? Okay, yeah, the current plan is to still uh, use that name. Uh, there are some plaques that exist. So I did, yeah, sorry. I, I, I only mentioned the restaurant plaque. It's for a little signage opportunity. The, the two brown rectangles to left and right of the main doors, those are existing um, bronze plaque that say the Surrey. So the plan is to restore those just as, as you see there. And then the, the marquee also says currently on left and right, the Surrey. And so that's- So planned. above those doors, what is that lighting? Uh, above zoom the in. doors? Zoom, let's zoom into the front doors. A little, no, above the, above the side doors. There's, oh, yeah, are, that, what is that? Those are existing, beautiful, existing stonework with little windows in them that you can't see currently because there's fixed awnings in front of them. So we're removing the fixed awnings so you could really see those beautiful little oculuses that were visible in 1926. Okay, so, you can so that will yeah. remain. Yes. That will remain. And uh, the signage, you have the original signage on either side of the door and the signage to the lounge and the signage on the other side. Is that going to be the same? What are the measurements and um, dimensions of the letters in the same way as the, as the historic? Uh, the, the, the lettering on the marquee is identical. In fact, we hope to literally keep that. It, um, if, if we have to replicate it, it's meant to be replicated exactly as it is. 
The two plaques left and right of the front door replicated exactly as they are. Until and how about at the lounge all the way to the uh, to my right? Uh, to, to the way right, right. up, there's no, there's no sign planned in that area at all. Um, there's the sign on the left of the facade next to the, the restaurant door, which we didn't dimension, but it's, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, it's too, it's meant to align with the stone joints and meant to align with the left edge of where the window opening is above on the second floor. So it's maybe 18 by 30. So it's much bigger than the plaques on either side of the main door. Yes. And that's to a restaurant. Yes. And no sign indicating the lounge to the far right. Correct. Because that's accessed from the hotel lobby. Those doors on the far right are really only meant for the staff of the lounge to serve sidewalk cafe. Oh, okay. So you have a permit for the cafe? We, we're not involved with that yet. The ownership will address that later. Okay. All right. Well, you've done a beautiful job. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, thank you. Really excellent presentation. Very clear, very beautiful. I care much more about having those six over six than where exactly they're located on the sides. So um, I think it's really nicely done. I guess my one question and I have mixed feelings about the lighting too, um, because there are residences across the street, right? I don't know how bright it would be. They seem, it seems pretty unusual for a building in a residential neighborhood. And I don't know if Jane will comment, but I'm just asking about the sidewalk cafe because it is a historic district. What, do you have any idea what's envisioned for that? And also, uh, I guess one other last, last thing is that, in terms of the marquee, it's a work in progress, but to not have any idea really what it will look like is a, is a wee bit disconcerting. But could you address the sidewalk cafe, please? Um, we, we, Alita, I don't think that's within our purview. We're here for context and appropriateness. But isn't, aren't there questions about sidewalk cafes and historic? They will have to go for a liquor license. They will have to go for a lot, you know, that will have to be approved, um, but not by us. Landmarks has nothing to do with sidewalk. No, cafes for that? No. Oh, all right. Then I take it back. Sorry, Alita. But the marquee, I think they're keeping the same um, footprint. Yeah, the yeah, marquee. It's look the same, the but the mullions the are going to be reduced. It, um, okay. Yeah, the mar marquee, we hope. I, 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 I apologize if I uh, suggested that we don't know what it's going to look like. We hope it's going to look exactly um, like oh, it sorry. looks now. And then with more visibility through the glass as one approaches. Okay, well, I, I really am glad that there's been such a sensitive approach to this. So thank you, that's all I have. Okay, um, lovely. Um, if it is possible to have over presented something, you have done it. Um, <laughs> And, um, but I, I, I applaud it, uh, it, it it's fine. Uh, the, the only thing I, I feel sad that um, uh, Cafe Boulou is no longer there or it doesn't <laughs> appear as though it will be, um, but um, uh, uh, it, this is certainly fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marco. Thank you, uh, uh, Jane. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yes, it's a very good presentation. It's very good concept. Uh, you maintain symmetry along with the with the six of six windows, which give you more character to the building. Uh, I was confused a little bit on the last row of windows. And then I saw that you have an arcade, and in each arcade you have one window, which breaks the continu the symmetry of the building, and that's I think that is your your explanation for the last row of windows in the center. And uh, I think it was very smart that you remove the awnings on the flanking uh, windows, 
because now you allow to have more visibility and more exuberance in the beautiful marquee that you have. Uh, yes, I think uh, there are no visible work on the on the mechanicals, so uh, I think it's perfectly fine. The screen of the mechanicals, um, well, I think, well, I think it's good. I hope that it works the mechanical in the way that you proposed. And thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. I fully support it. And I thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Thank you, Kimberly. Hi, thank you so much. Um, just to echo at what everyone else has said on the committee, this is an excellent presentation and I appreciate how thorough and how clear it was. I'm not sure if you mentioned this at the beginning, but a portion of this property is going to be residences, is that correct? Correct. Are those for purchase or for rent? Uh, the current plan is condominium for sale, but that's not been, I don't think, finalized yet. And the reason, Jane, that I'm asking this question is what if tenants come in and change this beautiful presentation that we have here? I was just curious, but okay. I don't think they can, but. Thank you. you. Know, in the historic district, so they would need a C of A if they wanted to make any external changes. Thank you, um, David. I think it's an excellent restoration, an overly long presentation, and uh, I fully support it. And I think that anything that is perhaps a little bit unresolved, like what the glass is going to be in the marquee, is in very good hands. So I applaud what you've done and certainly has my support. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We have a raised hand from Michelle before we go to- Go ahead, time. Michelle. Mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, move to approve as presented. That's great. You don't want to hear my opinion, Michelle, I guess. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jane. <laughs> well, it's okay. Of course I do. I'm, I'm, so I'm, moving, I'm supporting this, so I think okay. you're right. You can make your... <laughs> okay. And now second? the resolution, move to approve. Uh, yeah, I think you were seconded by Alita. Thank you. Okay, so we can go to a vote. I mean, I think it's unanimous. I mean, so I don't know if we have to do a roll call vote, but. Okay. So let's, let's okay, do let's, let's do the roll call. Okay. Sorry. Um, Elizabeth? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Alita? Yes, Jane, may I ask a question at the end of the vote? Not during okay. the vote. Me? Anthony? Yes. Thank you. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Marco? Yes. Christina? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Great. Unanimous approval. Alita, what is your question? It's just about the interior. I understand that the bar was a beautiful Art Deco space. Do you know if they intend to keep it or restore it? Um, the interior is not landmark, so I know I was just asking because they're um, here. <laughs> That's all. Well, we want to move along, but oh, okay. Um, do you want to answer that one question? Are you keeping the um, murals? Or... Um, Harry, I don't know if the applicant is Todd. Still here. Todd, are you muted? Please okay. keep your answer extremely brief. Okay, thanks for unmuting me. Um, as far as we know, they will, all the artwork, the Surrey was, the Surrey had incredible artwork. Um, and we believe ownership has taken what they want to reuse out of the building already. Okay, thank you. Does that thank answer you, your question? I'm not quite sure it does, but- um, It's okay. That, um, upscale look of this whole property. I'm sure that some of the artwork will remain, Alita. But we can go there and have a drink and find out for ourselves when it reopens. You're on. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I think we're going to move along. Um, I wanted to suggest to David that I could take number four if he took number five. Um, but I don't know whether that meets with his approval or not. Jane, how can I refuse you? You can't. Okay, so I'm going to take number four. I know uh, because 20 East 76 is going to be complicated to write up. So 7 East 81st Street, the Metropolitan Museum Historic District. Is the applicant here? Uh, yes. One so goodbye from BKSK. Thank you all. Well, you did a great job. You should be very proud of yourselves. We, we, we'll, we'll go have a drink in the bar. And, <laughs> okay. In three years. Seven East 81st Street? Yes. Thank you. Hi there. Thanks, Aida. Uh, good evening. My name is Sarah Scher. I'm from Higgins, Clays, Barth & Partners, and we're the historic preservation consultants for 7 East 81st Street. Um, I'm joined this evening with Ag Alexander Gold from Studio Cast, the architects on the project, uh, as well as my colleague, Cass Stackelberg, and they'll both be available to answer any questions. Um, so 7 East 81st Street is located on the north side of East 81st Street between Madison and Fifth Avenues in the Metropolitan Museum's Historic District. You may recall uh, that we were before you a little over a year ago uh, with a proposal to reclad the facade in limestone, which was approved by the community board. Um, and the design did continue to evolve after your review to incorporate your thoughts on the proposal for the final landmarks approval. Uh, and today we're here for two small public hearing items that are related to amending work that is already approved by a landmark staff. Uh, this includes extending an approved bulkhead at the roof, which you're seeing in this drawing here, um, as well as um, excavation below the rear yard. Uh, so I'll start with the excavation. Um, so here is the approved landmarks drawing showing the building and then the cellar at the ground floor. Um, the current approval is for new excavation under the rear yard addition, which you're seeing here. Uh, there's underpinning approved to one side of the property that's already been approved for excavation work. Uh, and this is the proposed work. Uh, so the proposed scope is to extend the excavation into the rear yard with a five foot setback from the property line. Um, and as I said, underpinning on one side of the house has already been approved and the excavation work will be uh, 14 feet underneath uh, the rear yard. And here's just a section looking the other direction. Once again, this is the approved excavation work at the cellar level, and then the proposed work at the rear yard with a five foot setback from the property line. I'm a little uh, bit confused when you say the five foot setback, you're extending the, um, the excavation by how many feet? Uh, it's about 21 and a half feet you're into the rear yard. It. Yes, but 21. there's a five, Right, exactly. 21 and a half feet into the rear yard. Into but, rear yard, but yeah. there's a five foot setback. From the property line. This is um, something that Landmarks likes to see to allow for the growth of trees in the donut in the future. If um, Because they generally approve excavation, but like to see this five foot um, gap maintained for wow. tree okay. growth in the future. I just so, was a little bit confused. So yeah, no the, problem. Um, how many feet were previously approved? You're extending 21 and a half feet now, but what was the previous approval for? So, um, well, so there, there's been excavation for the entire cellar for the underneath the house that includes right. the, this and this. I'm not sure what the- uh, oh, this Alex, is do you just have the, for that five foot setback, this No, it's just this, see this red um, yeah, bit I right here? It. That it, yeah, it's just this area, which is underneath the, the rear yard. So that's so that 21 is 20. and a half feet beyond what was previously approved. Exactly, yeah. Okay, now I get it. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. 75 yeah. feet extension, and then uh, so 20 and then five, it's the whole lot. All right, great. Okay, thank you. I was just confused on that. Oh yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. Um, so before just going into plans, a photo of the rear yard, the excavation is all underground, but we just wanted to give you a sense of what the rear yard looks like. It has uh, a fence on three sides and is, is quite shallow in depth, about 26 feet. Um, and then uh, a plans, uh, the approved seller plan is on the top. And then the proposed seller plan on the bottom, just showing that 
excavation work highlighted in red, that's the extent of excavation that is under your review for public hearing. Okay. Uh, then going to the roof, which is the other item we're looking to amend the approval for. So on the left-hand side, we're seeing an axon looking at the front facade and then uh, an approved bulkhead that's sitting approximately almost 40 feet set back from the front facade. It's L-shape and plan and um, was approved to have an elevator, a stair, and then just a, a bit of a circulation vestibule space uh, with raised chimneys on other, either side and mechanical units. So uh, our proposed work, which is going to public review, is to extend the footprint of this to make it occupiable, approximately adding um, 131 square feet to the space to make it occupiable to a, a, a more rectangular plan. The front elevation of the approved addition will remain in the same location. The height will get a little bit lower here um, with the skylight matching the approved height of the bulkhead. It is not visible from the street. Um, so this is based on um, landmarks rules that don't allow for um, an occupiable addition with uh, at the roof as well as at the rear. So that is what's bringing this to your review now, going from a bulkhead to an occupiable addition. So here's um, an axon. Yeah. How many? You're adding 131 square feet. Yeah. To the already approved bulkhead. Is that yes. correct? Correct. To make it, and it will be occupiable. Yeah, and occupiable Previously, it was space. a bulkhead. Exactly. And you're increasing the height or not increasing the height? Not increasing the height. Okay. So that's it for the boat or the roof, right? Yep. And so the 31 square feet to make it an occupiable space. I'm sorry, it's 115 square feet. 115 square feet. Yeah. And the bulkhead that was previously approved included an elevator bulkhead. What, what, what else did you mention? It included an elevator bulk, bulkhead, a stair landing, okay. and then just some circulation space for those okay. two. Okay. Areas. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so there's just two more axons looking at the, the rear elevation. You can see that more L shape being infilled uh, to the rear of the, the house uh, with a little bit of a setback from the rear elevation. Uh, then just looking north, um, uh, I'm sorry, looking south uh, west, uh, again, you can see again, the footprint is just being infilled uh, to match this uh, previously approved elevation to become an occupiable addition. Uh, and then a plan, um, this showing where that's being infilled. I think it's a little bit clear on the bulkhead plan, um, the approved footprint of the bulkhead and then to an occupiable addition here. And as you can see that addition is set back approximately 40 feet from the front of the building and is not visible from any public thoroughfare. Um, elevations, just focusing on the roof, um, the rest is approved. So um, going from the previously approved the, the front brick and cast stone part of the elevation is sinking down a bit and then there's a skylight being added. The top of the skylight aligns with the top of the approved bulkhead. So there's no increase in height for the addition. And then looking at the rear elevation, once again, just focusing on the roof, uh, just showing a little bit more design, but of course not visible from any public thoroughfare um, and maintaining the height of the approved bulkhead. Uh, here are photos of the roof, um, pre-work or existing conditions, just with simple bulkheads on the top. And then here's a photo of the mock-up that was done that shows the um, addition with the increased chimney heights and the mechanicals as well. And that was um, constructed and documented, was not visible from anywhere in the public thoroughfare. Uh, so just to summarize, the, the scope of work is for excavation in the rear yard, not visible from the public thoroughfare, as well as a non-visible rooftop addition that, that would amend a previous approval for a bulkhead at the roof. Um, and with that, I'll happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Um, is anyone from the public present? 
We don't have any raised hands from members of the public. Okay, so we can start, I guess, in the reverse with Marco. Yes, Marco, confirm a meeting. Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, I think uh, this application is not visible in the excavation that you propose, nor in the uh, infill that you propose in the rear yard. The setback of the rooftop addition is far away from the from the street level, and I think it's a very simple application, and I think I don't have no problem. Thank you. Anthony? Okay, I'm up. Thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, this is fine. I'm I'm generally in favor of sort of squaring things up, and and that's exactly what they're doing here. And uh, certainly the um, the creation of the uh, a uh, subterranean uh, exercise space is sort of, while well, I guess we have to care about it since it's completely underground and invisible even from the neighbors, I think it's fine. Thank you, Alita. Thank you. Are we looking at that skylight? Yes, it what? is um, the same height as the uh, roof of the previously approved bulkhead, the, the front facade is sinking down, but then there's a skylight on top, so it won't be visible from the sidewalk. It looked, well, the light will be visible though, right? Because the skylight emits a lot of light from the shape and from the height. Um, to me, it's kind of like a cutoff flashlight. I really don't like it. Everything else is fine, but I object to the skylight. I'll probably be overruled by my colleagues, but that's just my um, thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle? I actually had the same question about the skylight. Um, you said that to the top of the skylight is the same height as the original. See, when you look at it, you can see it. Right. Yeah. So it, it does come up over the the yeah. elevation that we're showing, but as you can see, the um this is the top of that original bulkhead new draw line. It goes to the top of the skylight. This is getting lowered a little bit, and then this will be. So why did it. you render it this way? What do you mean? Well, you rendered it visible. Well, it it, it shows up in elevation because it is taller than the um, bulkhead, but it won't be visible from the street. Like it, it's too um, set back and short to be visible from the street. About how many square feet is it of, of glass? Um, Alex, do you know the answer to that? When you say square feet of glass, you mean the, the skylight itself? The I think it, well, yeah. I'm worried about the light emission. So when we look at it proportionally, like what are its measurements? Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. About 12 by 17. And the height of it? Uh, two feet. All right, that's not terrible, I guess. Um, also, if you go back to the preceding slide, the one that shows it, the two facades, um, is this just the rendering of why the windows at the top look different than they do in the approved elevation and then the proposed elevation? Are you actually changing those windows? They look like fan windows in the proposed? Yep. Oh, right. of the of the addition, the design? Yeah. yeah. I, yes, the design is changing. Oh, so that's very significant. Well, it's it's not visible. So it's only something that you would see if you were on the roof of the house or if you were on a neighbor's roof. So what is that, a terrace in front of it? In other words, the roof of the building is, acts yeah. as a terrace around the mechanicals. Yeah, there's a small terrace area because it is so far set back. If you can see that right yeah. um, All right, here, well, it's like the, this area, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. well, the saving grace is that none of it is visible, but I think the change of the window is completely inappropriate to the building. So I have to sort of decide 
how disturbing that is for me, just as an architectural um, decision, ver you know, versus whether or not it can be seen. So I'll think about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth? Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, I think we can't consider it. If you if you can't see it, we can't disprove of it, disapprove of it. But I quite agree with Michelle that the uh, approved fr front of the orangery uh, here is a far more attractive, more appropriate design than. The proposed, uh, but I, I guess I can't turn it down if you can't see it. But I, I, I hope you'll go back because for the people who live there, that should be if they're interested in architecture, that should be much more attractive to them than what this is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kimberly. Thank you, Saida. I was on the fence with this one, but I think this dialogue around the skylight has convinced me, but I'm curious what Jane and David have to say about this. Okay. And Christina, I think Christina. Yeah. Am I well, Christina, I did Christina okay. leave? Yeah, I think she she left. Oh, so. it looks like she left, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Can we see the rear elevation? Looks to me like uh, we have sort of the orangery on the rear elevation. Is that correct? Yes, you mean this top floor? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And on the front elevation. Is it glazed or solid? It's glazed on both sides. It's okay. a orangery. Right. I think it's just because the, the roof slopes. So in elevation, you're just seeing the tops of the windows. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't, can we look at the front elevation again? Yeah. Yeah, so if, um, so this is a true elevation and the, mm -hmm. if you could, right. do, do, do. I can show you the section. So you see how the roof slopes down. Right. Um, so that's why you're only seeing this part of, of it in elevation. Well, I personally think that this is well done. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's a real issue uh, that the uh, front elevation has been changed. And if anything, you have it now in the rear. And so the people in the rear will see it instead of the people in the front. Uh, but I think on balance, uh, it's very well done. And I think we should civilly approve it. Thank you. I guess it's my turn. I will support the application. Does somebody want to make a um, resolution? We have. Resolution is uh, to uh, approve as presented. Is there a second? Marco seconds. Thank you. We can call the roll now. Okay, one second while I meet everyone. Elizabeth? Yes. Michelle? I'm going to say no. I find it disconcerting. <laughs> no. Alita? No. Anthony? Yes. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Marco? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Six in favor, two opposed. <coughs> Okay, right. So we've had Thank the vote. Okay. On to 829 Madison Avenue, Upper East Side Historic District, by Blinder Bell Architects. 
a contemporary style building designed by Charles Buch and Company and constructed in 1885. Application is for modifications to the facade and storefront on the first and second floors of a non-original facade, as well as remedying LPC violations for work done under prior ownership of the building. And is the uh, architect's representative here? Yes. He's here and sharing his screen. And can you tell us who you are? Sure. Uh, my name is Maxwell Powell. I'm a partner at Buyer Blender Bell. Thank you uh, for having us here tonight. I know it's getting a little bit late, so I'll try to run through it uh, relatively relatively quickly here. Um, Not so too quickly so that I can't take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to slow me down at any moment. Um, so uh, as, as David mentioned, we're, we're here tonight to discuss the um, proposed modifications to 829 Madison Avenue, which is on the corner of 69th and Madison. Um, our client uh, recently purchased the property and would like to improve the visibility and sort of the accessibility of the ground floor and the second floor retail pictured here sort of behind the um, dark black uh, storefront um, and, 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 and canvas um, here on the second floor. Um, and, as, and at the same time, also there's a little bit of restoration work that um, is proposed. So the project really consists of two primary scopes of work. Um, the first scope of work involves some general restoration work, uh, repairing some leaks and that sort of stuff, which is likely to be staff level review and not necessarily commission review, but I did want to kind of go through some of that with you just so you're aware of what we're proposing. Um, and also some of that involves rectifying um, outstanding LPC violations. So I'll go through some of those as well. Um, and then of course, the second scope of work involves the redesign of the base of the building itself, uh, removing the uh, non-historic base that currently exists today uh, and replacing it with a design that we feel is a little bit more in scale and in materiality with the building above uh, while transforming the retail into design that's you know, more feasible with retailers today and um, in the future. Uh, so again, just real quickly, it's on the Northeast corner of 69th and Madison Avenue um, in the Upper East Side Historic District. The site's about 75 feet long along 69th Street and about 27 feet wide on Madison Avenue. Uh, so here's a photo of the existing condition on the left and just a sort of a quick uh, modeled up version of the same existing conditions here. Uh, it's a five-story building. Um, the building's in decent shape, um, but there were a number of alterations that have occurred over the years um, that I'll walk through. Um, so the upper three floors are brick um, that's been painted over at least a couple of times over the history of the building. Um, the third floor storefront that's facing Madison Avenue is actually not historic. It's, uh, it was part of a, an alteration that occurred in the 60s when the, um, the retail uh, facade was put in to the building. Um, the retail level actually has um, three, I guess it's four entries. There is an entrance on Madison Avenue, which accesses the front half of the ground floor retail, as well as the second floor retail that's sort of behind this uh, black mesh. There's a small jewelry store that's right here, which is right here in the, um, in the action view here. A third entry, which is an entrance to actually access the tenants on the third, fourth and fifth floors. And then there's an existing restaurant on the Eastern end of, of the building. So, when we kind of run through the timeline a little bit. So again, the building was built in 1885. Um, uh, Sanborn map kind of shows the extent of the building over here. Um, it was built and designed as a, a Queen, um, Queen Anne style um, uh, as part of a sort of actually a collection of buildings that sort of lined it, both the Western side of uh, 69th street and also the Eastern side of, of, of 69th street as well. So it's sort of part of a collection of, of, of of, of townhomes that were built in that era, but a lot of them also have, have been modified over time. Um, in 1907, uh, the Sanborn map actually changes. You can kind of see there was a, uh, a stair enclosure that was added uh, that was uh, formed the entry for the, for the townhouse at that time. Um, and and that, that was sort of the main change that occurred in 1907. Um, when we hit 1945, around that time, the enclosure was actually removed. The stair remained. Uh, but other than that, no, no real change to the building. This was still a single family residence at that time. Uh, by the time the 1960s rolled around, right, the building had already been converted to multifamily use. So there were multiple units in the building, um, as well as, you know, sort of the change along Madison Avenue for these buildings starting to change and, you know, house more and more retail, right? So you can see um, as sort of outlined in the red dashed line, the changes that occurred back in the 60s, right? So the entire first and second floors were replaced 
right? So all of this was taken out. The bay window was removed. The third floor was added on the front over here. There were three windows that were lowered or the sills were lowered to sort of enlarge um, the openings. Um, and we're not quite sure what happened, but the cap uh, was also removed at that time, right? So that was back in the 1960s. And then if you look at the 80s uh, tax uh, department photo, you can kind of see that, you know, largely all of this remains and then sort of the addition of this um, fabric scrim over the second floor windows was added and actually that, you know, is still there today or actually just recently removed um, by our clients so that we can look at the condition of the facade. So, of course, in 81, the district was uh, created, the Upper East Side, right, and the um, uh, destination report uh, came out for this building. Um, and I think there are a couple of things that were noted. One was that, you know, the, um, the, the chimney cap had been removed and that also the basement first uh, two floors had been altered for shops. Uh, so those are sort of important, important elements. Um, so then sort of fast forwarding to the 80s and sort of to today, this is sort of the condition of the building back from the 80s to 2000s, the 2010s, hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, again, the ground floor and the second floor um, retail with the second floor being covered by the scrim. Obviously the, the building got painted at some point black and then at some point repainted again, uh, I think back in the 2010s to sort of this reddish brick color, right? So the building has at least gone through a couple of rounds of, of various paint. Uh, on the building, and one of the things we want to do is sort of take away that take away that paint and, and see what the condition of the brick is uh, behind it. So, um, just a summary of, of the changes that has occurred over the time, right? So everything that's sort of dashed in red occurred prior to designation. So obviously, the change to the Madison Avenue frontage up to the third floor, the entire um, 69th Street frontage on the first and second floors, the window sills being dropped down. Um, on these locations, but there are also wanted to just um, call out these nine windows that are in blue is one of the LPC violations that uh, is remaining from prior ownership. And that was due to window replacements that were not approved by landmarks, right? So these used to be one over one double hung windows um, and they were changed to casement windows. And this is these are windows that the current owner is proposing to change back to double hung windows just so that we're, we're, we're back to what this building looked like originally um, and also to rectify obviously the, the, um, the violation with landmarks. So um, just sort of summarizing some of the, uh, the, the existing conditions now and the photos that we, we see here. Uh, again, um, the, the third floor and up is sort of this brick uh, facade, second floor has got the scrim and then the ground floor has this sort of polished black granite um, uh, facade on the ground floor. The, um, the little jewelry shop is right here in the middle. And this is the lobby entrance that takes you up to the third, fourth and fifth floors. Uh, we understand from landmarks that this particular storefront that was installed by the previous ownership is also a violation. Uh, but uh, as part of our proposal for the, for the redesign of the whole ground and second floors, we will be you know, sort of hopefully rectifying that condition as well. Um, there is an existing restaurant that's sort of tucked in here in the blue that's remaining as well. And we're, we're not proposing to change anything with this um, operating restaurant. All right, so I'm not gonna read through all of this, but the, these are sort of the five um, uh, active LPC violations that we are proposing to rectify as part of this application. And I just wanted to point out the one that's probably the most critical, which is the casement windows um, being replaced by double hung windows on those nine locations. And I can point that out to you in our proposed elevations. And then a number of these other ones relate to um, sort of uh, awnings that were installed um, without, uh, without a permit at, at the time, or the storefront that I'd mentioned um, that provides access to the third floor, which will be sort of superseded by the revised design that we're proposing um, on the building. So um, again, as part of the, uh, the, the project, we are proposing some restoration work, again, to, to kind of um, uh, help tidy up the building, but also um, fix some leaks that are happening in the building right now as well. So I think the most obvious and one is that we are proposing to remove the coating that currently, or I guess it's a paint, that's on the brick portion of the building. Uh, we are proposing to remove that, strip that, 
um, and then repair any damaged brick, repoint the building as needed as well. So we have a nice, you know, tight building. What we're not sure about is the condition of the brick that's behind there. We don't know if it's a patchwork of different bricks. So we are actually proposing uh, that we do apply a new coating on top of the brick so that there is uniformity. However, before we do that, we will speak with Landmark staff. Uh, if the condition is good, we would love to actually just keep it uncoated, right? The buildings like to be uncoated. They don't want to be coated, but it might just be such a hodgepodge once we strip out all of the paint that we might have to coat it again. So our proposal does contemplate the use of a new coating on the upper portion of the building. Um, there's also uh, some uh, repair work on the brownstone along the cornice, along some of the eave lines uh, of the roof, as well as the dormers that are up here as well. So that's all gonna be repaired. Um, and then the roof itself, which is actually a synthetic roof currently will be also replaced with a new um, comp composite roofing material, right? So it's not gonna be slate that's gonna go back there, but it's a, uh, a roofing that will look like slate that is being proposed to be replacing the existing roof at the top. And, and then finally, um, you know, uh, the, the windows that are shown in yellow are the nine windows that we're proposing to change back out into double hung windows. And of course, we'll talk about the proposal on the first two floors as well. Okay, so, um, so now we sort of start taking a look at the proposed uh, redesign of the first and second floors. So looking back on the Madison Avenue storefront master plan, um, this is our building right here, 829 Madison. You can see that the first three floors in Madison Avenue is, is uh, indicated as green, meaning that there is not um, historic um, fabric behind there. This is, uh, has been modified from the original design. Um, and I'm going to show uh, a, a few um, projects in the district or precedent uh, projects in the district that sort of helped us inform um, our design. And all of those largely are also uh, coated green under the Madison Avenue storefront mass month. So it's got a little bit of a similarity in terms of where those projects uh, started off and where we are today as well uh, for our project here. Um, so we'll kind of work our way up from Madison Avenue and make our way up uh, towards our site up on 69th Street. Um, so the first two projects are um, 690 Madison, which is on uh, 62nd Street, and 63rd Street is the project on 710. And I think um, there are a couple of things that we, we want just to kind of uh, call attention to here. So this is a... Um, uh, a renovation of the first two floors as well, um, using a brick facade on the ground floor to uh, sort of tie into both the brick on the side facade, the street facade, as well as the brownstone on the Madison Avenue facade. Um, the retail uh, expression is a double height um, expression of, of glazing. And I think um, all of these examples you'll see are examples of double height expressions on the first and second floors. Um, I think you'll uh, you'll know based on your experience that a lot of these smaller buildings on these corners in particularly, you know, have a very, very low floor to floor height on the first two floors, right? These were designed as, you know, residences originally, right? So when they became converted to, res uh, to retail uses, it's always been tough to kind of get that sort of true feeling of a uh, two-story uh, uh, retail reading inside. So oftentimes, you'll find that in these types of retail spaces, the front portion of the building will be like a double height space, right? And you get that double height reading of the glazing that kind of gives you a feeling of a larger space inside. And then as the um, space moves towards the back, that second floor slides back in. So it kind of feels a little bit like a mezzanine. And that's sort of the same idea that we're, we're, we're thinking of uh, for our project as well. Um, I think on, six, on 710 Madison Avenue, I think uh, what's, what's interesting about that is again, similarly a double height space, uh, frontage on Madison Avenue, but the side street has a very sort of regularized um, cadence of uh, openings and piers. Uh, that is also a double height reading uh, running down 63rd Street uh, as well. Um, a couple other examples, which I don't necessarily think are, are sort of precedents for what we're proposing to do, but, but again, pointing out uh, some of this double height reading, again, on these smaller buildings on the corners on Madison Avenue and on the side streets. It's sort of pointing out, um, you know, sort of this consistency of, of, of the sort of double height reading that we often see on these corners, which are obviously, you know, very visible retail corners. Um, and then sort of making our way up a little bit higher uh, up, on, uh, up on Madison Avenue, closer to our site, uh, 791 Madison, again, 
uh, sort of uh, a very, very large um, transparent reading along Madison Avenue, and then sort of wider double height reading along the side street. And then the last uh, example that I'll point out is um, 827 Madison Avenue, which is actually directly across the street from us. So it's just on the south side of, uh, of 69th Street on, and Madison, uh, which also has, and I'll zoom in a little bit, this sort of double height reading, two large double height um, um, uh, storefront um, on the base, and then sort of um, a regular cadence of uh, storefront along 69th Street, right? So, so these were sort of examples and precedents that we had sort of pulled out. They're all examples of projects that um, under the Madison Avenue storefront guidelines are were co color-coded green predominantly. Uh, so very similar to um, the situation that we find ourselves in with uh, 829 Madison Avenue. All right, so uh, this is the existing uh, building facade. And, um, you know, uh, I think, one can say many things about the about the existing uh, retail facade, but I think one of the things we really wanted to try to do was to um, you know, not only provide for more visibility into the store, but also have a, have um, a, a sense of scale and materiality that relates to the building up above. We think that's that's really important. So what we decided to do was to introduce a brick back into the base of the building. So this is our proposed elevations. Uh, this is the Madison Avenue facade. This is the 69th Street facade. So we're, we're introducing a, a brick facade uh, in framement along both sides of the building. So on Madison Avenue, we have a slightly larger reading of uh, the storefront double height uh, with some decorative metal banding, both at a spandrel level, which is where the uh, second floor slab could slide in, um, as well as at the head of, of the opening as well to give it a little bit more sort of uh, deck, um, uh, uh, um, visual interest as well. We also have um, a couple of um, bronze colored piers that are coming down that center the door, that's the entry into the retail space. And those are there because we're actually trying to hide um, existing columns that are right behind it, right? So there's a series of structure columns and beams that are sort of all over this first two floors. And we're trying to uh, you know, uh, maintain the transparency while uh, trying to hide the existing structure that's behind it. Um, when we turn the corner on 69th Street, uh, we then introduced a regularized cadence of three storefront openings um, along uh, 69th Street. And in doing so, we're able to also incorporate the that jewelry store in a new uh, storefront with, their, with, an, with an entry for them, as well as a new entry into the um, access for the third, fourth, and fifth floor tenants uh, up in the building. So this becomes a much more regularized facade uh, with brick. And then um, the restaurant itself, we are keeping as is. We're not, we're not changing, we're proposing to change that right now. Um, and then on top of the brick, uh, you'll notice that we raised the brick up to the level right below the um, third floor windows, which then places a new cornice line um, that's in the brownstone color that we have in sort of some of this other trim work that exists on the building, sort of right below them. That's very close to where the original cornice was uh, for the building, which we thought, you know, not only was sort of a nice thing, but actually proportionally feels better than having, we can just go back, uh, the line of the retail sort of end somewhere in between the second and third floors, which seemed kind of, kind of odd uh, in the existing condition. Um, as we move our way up a little bit, you'll see here that uh, these are the double hung windows. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, double hung windows that are uh, replacing the existing casement windows on those floors, again, to rectify the, uh, the violation with landmarks. And then up on the roof, you'll notice that we are uh, repairing, we're actually we're installing new snow guards. Uh, these are very, very steep slope roofs that currently exists, there's no gutter on this building. So we are proposing a combination of snow guards as well as a sort of pad style snow guards that will kind of hold um, the snow and ice in place. So that's more of a safety issue, but obviously something that's, uh, that's a little bit visible as well. Um, going, moving on to just sort of a blow up and just an axon of, of what we're proposing as well. Uh, again, sort of the, the ground floor, second floor reading. Um, and we're, we're also proposing, actually, let's go to the next slide here. Oh, this, um, 
This is a slide to show the potential for some second floor awnings. This would not be installed by the owner, but we're trying to uh, see if we can get a, some additional awnings added in the event um, a future tenant might may want awnings on the facade. So that's what this is showing. Um, and finally, just a, a materials board, just to give you a sense of the materials that we're proposing. So sort of starting at the top, you know, I mentioned that the existing brick uh, work would be stripped of the uh, paint that's on there. We are proposing currently a um, sort of a reddish brick um, uh, uh, mineral system uh, that would be that could be applied if what we find after the stripping is a brick that's really a patchwork that's not in great shape. Uh, if that's the case, then we will reach back out to Landmark staff and confirm the, the color that we're going to be using here. And that will sort of be um, uh, complementary to what we're proposing on the ground floor and the second floor, which is a, um, a, a lightly smooth uh, blended brick. So it's not going to be a glazed brick and it's not going to be a wire cut brick. It'll be, have a very, very light texture on it, but a smooth face. Um, and we're intending it to be largely within the sort of reddish brick realm that I think fits very well with the district with maybe 5% of just a slightly darker tone just to get a little bit of range in the brick work down below, which I think will be really nice. And then that uh, compatible, compatible with a slightly lighter uh, reddish uh, coating on the existing brick, I think will be really nice, uh, along with the brownstone trim that we'll be adding for the um, for the uh, for the cornice, um, up on the roof, we've uh, proposed a Da Vinci uh, slate uh, product, which is uh, a pretty hardy uh, replacement product up above. Uh, you'll see the snow guards. I'll zoom in a little bit, right? So it's got a bar system that's going to be black with these little, um, I guess, these little pins that kind of come up and hold the ice in place. Um, all of the uh, replacement windows will have a dark bronze uh, finish, uh, which matches the other windows that are on the building currently. Um, and then just kind of coming down to the storefront again, um, the brick, we've got a granite base that's gonna be a honed finish down below. And the glass will be a clear glass. Uh, and we believe we're gonna need bird safe um, glazing. So we're proposing a film that would be placed on top of the, the storefront glass. So that um, is our presentation and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for a good presentation and rapidly done, given the length of uh, information. Uh, so let's hear from the public if anybody has a comment. Okay, it looks like we will go to uh, to the committee. So I guess we start with Elizabeth. I, I think that this is a nice correction uh, to a pretty mongrel building. Um, I think th I like the, the brick. Uh, I'm amazed that we've got so, so much imitation, slate, imitation brick, and so on. But... I don't, I don't think it's bad, and I, I think that you've uh, uh, arrived at a decent solution. If I think of anything more, I'll add it later. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my next, I think so. Um, thank you. It was an excellent presentation, easy to follow and easy to understand. You have come along like a savior to save this building. <laughs> so horrendous. Uh, I just have a couple of questions because I'm not sure what I'm looking at. The uh, doors on the ground level are clear glass, right? So we will be able to see into the store. Yes. Correct? That's correct. Yes. And they swing open? Or are they functioning as double doors or is it window on one side? What is it? Yes. Yeah, so this is all fixed windows on both sides. It's a single door swinging in. It's a very small retail space. So Oh, oh yeah. I see. Okay. So these are the fixed on either side and then you're just mimicking that on the upper level? Yes. We're mimicking the same, the same, same thing. And the, then it's just, all fixed. Right. And then the bronze 
pillars are covering columns on the interior that are unsightly. That's okay, correct. fine. Um, and the only signage will be on the door, as you've indicated, on that band, I should yes. say, above the door. That's yes. the only signage. Yeah, I can go back. So the intent is to provide opportunities for some signage here. So, oh, um, uh, because there is a, a jewelry store here, there is a tenant that takes up the upper floors. This is a commercial building. Um, and then the, these would be the, the signage locations for the- So for there's the no building. residential in this building? No. Okay. Um, now, the, the windows on the floor above these, um, they're just single pane? I mean, what are they? These windows up here? Yeah. Yeah, so they're existing windows. Um, um, they're they're just, I believe they're fixed windows. I'm actually not entirely sure we're not changing them, um, but these ones obviously are, are double hung windows um, over here. But these were changed in the 1960s when 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 all of this changed, um, you know, and the bay window was removed. Uh, but this is part of that third floor tenant space. But you're changing the windows to the right on the on the side. We're you're putting the, those in yes, and on the lower floor. Um, this actually exists already. So we're just changing the ones actually on the fourth floor, as oh, well so, as these two in the dormer right here. So on that, I'm calling it the second floor, I guess. Uh, those windows are already there, the one over one? Uh, these are there, correct. These are already there. Well, I have to say, I mean, it looks awfully strange, those other six panes of glass, and actually another one on the return. Do I see another side? Yeah, right yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're not proposing to do anything about that? They're not historic. Yeah, we, we aren't, um, mainly because the change that would, there's an active tenant in there right now. Um, so in order to change it or change the design of this, we would, you know, we would be impacting their space. So we've been asked not to change this, this portion of the facade. Is that forever or is that only until his lease is up or whatever? I don't know, actually. I don't know when the lease is up. Okay, I mean, if that's the circumstance, that's the circumstance. But it's a very, to me, it's a very bizarre looking um, windows, and they're fixed, so they're not operable in any way. They don't open, or I will have to check. I actually don't know. If they, are there any mechanicals on this building? How are you air conditioning and heating it? Are there any mechanicals? There's there's some equipment up on the roof that you can't see. It's on the backside, so it doesn't pertain to this application. No, we're not changing any of that. All right. Well, I'm fine with what you're doing, but it's sort of concerning to me what you're not doing. So I don't quite know how to <laughs> think about that because that sort of looks strange to me. All right. I'll think and I'll listen. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Alita. Hi, I have a couple of questions. Thank you for the presentation. When you were talking about the side initially, you said something about the jewelry store that hopefully you were changing it, but it looks like you are changing it. So I wasn't really sure what you meant by that. Yeah, I, I think it was probably in reference to the, there's a current LPC violation. Uh, let me just go back to Yes, it, it was a violation. Yeah, so this is, is currently a violation because I think, um, when the previous owner changed it, they did not seek a permit to do it. So that's just like an open violation. So in our current proposal, obviously that goes away and we're just, we're redesigning everything down there. So we believe, um, you know, when we go to, when we go to the commission, we'll present it this way. And, you know, if they agree with this, um, the design is appropriate, then it would, that violation would go away. Well, I see. Okay. Thank you. So I guess given the six, windows that Michelle was objecting to on the third floor, I'm actually okay with the bottom because they it kind of responds to it and reflects it. But I have a lot of trouble with the side and all of those photos that you showed don't do any, don't give me any help at all because to me, they all look like an alien plucked down an interesting older building on top of something 
not nearly as interesting and discordant. So the front of it is okay. The side of it just has no connection to me at all with what's above. So even though it's not historic and you could do it, to me doesn't mean that you should do it. So I have some trouble with that, but I'll see what my colleagues say. And then you mentioned something at the end about awnings, that you wanted to get approval for awnings just in case some future tenant wanted them. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of these things where, um, uh, you know, oftentimes we find these retailers want a little bit more presence on the corner. Um, so we've been asked to see if we can add awnings on the second floor, um, but the owner will not put them in themselves. Like, I think it's something that they will kind of have to go back to landmarks to get approved. Right, because stores have or landlords have come to us just on the basis of awnings alone. So yeah. I couldn't agree to anything relating to awnings without more information about every aspect of it. So that I would not be able to say yes to. I, I guess, I don't know, I my comments still stand. With well, let's, let's clarify whether the awnings are part of this application or not. Mr. Powell. Yeah, I... <laughs> It, it's something we've been discussing with with landmarks as well. Um, you know, so initially, we we thought it should be in there um, so that we can you know preserve the ability to have it in there. But the reality is we don't have a tenant yet, so we don't have a, like a color, for instance, that we can we can call out. So um, I I think we should go back to our client and talk to them about removing the awnings um, as part of the application with officially with landmarks. So then we would not be approving awnings at this point. Oh. We, we need to know whether but just we're, as a yes or a no, including whether we're including awnings or not at this time. Um, and then if it's not possible for you to say we're not including them, uh, we can, of course, uh, have more than we can have two parts to the resolution one part for everything and then one part for awnings. That might be the best way to do it. We can do it that way. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm done and thank you for a very clear presentation. Who's next? Anthony? Um, Anthony, confirm a meeting. Anthony? Why don't we skip over him and come back? Okay. Um, he must have stepped away for a moment. Yeah. Marco? Oh, thank you, David. Uh, I think it's a very good uh, proposal. I think uh, it makes uh, more common sense. And I think it's very smart to retain the restaurant. They give you a little bit more, more uh, richness in the, in the, in the facade. Even the color, it looks nice. Um, just I have a little bit of a question. On this handles that you have, does this an existing floor or not? Uh, the spandrel? Yeah. Yeah, so there. So the intent is to have the second floor, which which is here. It's right behind the spandrel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Continue across. And um, there's an intent to have a double height space in the front. So it might be one bay, it might be two bays. That's sort of being worked out with the structural engineer right now. But the intent is the rest of it, where there is a floor, will be right behind the spandrel. Oh, oh okay. So I, I, I think uh, you answered my question very well. And I think pretty much your approach, your approach is well done. If you compare what, what we have right there, I think it's definitely um, is an improvement that I would like to support. Thank you. Has Anthony come back? Uh, we have a raised hand from Michelle, actually, but I don't think Anthony has come back. Michelle? Yeah, I noticed we didn't talk about lighting. Are you not having any, or is it just not part of this application? No, there's, it's not part of this application. We don't have any currently. You don't have any. And if you should want lighting, you would come back to us as you would with the awning? Correct. Okay, thank you. We still haven't gone through the committee. Alita, you have a question? 
No, I don't. I, I got a text from Anthony in which he said, could you let them know that my internet connection is unstable and I can't participate? <laughs> and he can't participate? That's what he said. I'm just quoting. He could call in. Okay, I'll text him. He's probably heard that, but I'll text him anyway. Thank you. In the meantime, let's, uh, let's finish going through the committee. All right, we have a public member, right? Yes, Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly. And I will be brief. <clears throat> I don't have any additional questions per se, but I'm I'm not sure how I'm going to vote on this because I think Alita's points earlier were well taken, but I'm curious what David and Jane have to say. I guess, uh, let's see if Alita makes contact with Anthony. I texted him. I haven't heard back. So I mean, I suggest that he just call Saida too. Okay. Saida, you could email him your um the office cell phone, could you? I will. Thank you. Jane. David, I'm gonna wait for your pearls of wisdom. It's um confusing to me at best. At the moment, I'm gonna support because it is an improvement over what was there previously. <clears throat> well, I think it's an improvement, I think. Uh, that uh, it uh, has a lot in common with the corner buildings that uh, we were shown. Uh, I think that uh, even though they were not uh, allowed to look at the front third floor, uh, I personally think it's okay. In some sense, it makes a transition uh, going from the storefronts on the first two floors to the third floor and then to the fourth and fifth floors. Uh, I have no problems with the, the synthetic slate. It'll look beautiful and it'll look like slate. Um, I think that uh, the double height uh, bays uh, on, on the street are fine. Again, as I said, I think that they were re they related to other uh, similar kinds of solutions. And I happen to think that in the case of this particular building, it works quite well. Uh, I do think that the corners going up to the underside of the windows on the third floor is a good uh, uh, gesture. It's a good move architecturally. <clears throat> I think that uh, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And I think that uh, Byron Lindabell has done a really good job of taking a building that uh, uh, was made pretty awful over the years and uh, making it, uh, I think, very... Uh, acceptable and reasonable uh, within the uh, historic district. So I think uh, the architects have done a good job, certainly has my support. Anyway, that's uh, Jane, I don't know if you want to comment. No, please. David, I think you summarized things very, very well. Um, and I will vote to approve as I said previously. So thank you. You're gonna have two resolutions. No, we're going to have one resolution with two pieces. Oh, well, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. So if somebody wants to make a resolution. A resolution to approve with um, with um, the awnings in a separate resolution, in a separate piece, part A and part B. Right. <clears throat> Is there a we second? Have a second. Oh, I guess. We have Marco seconding it. So let's uh, let's vote on... Uh, I assume that uh, a that part A is to approve as presented. So let's vote on that. Hey, uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Michelle. Yes. Alita? Yes. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Marco? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Okay. And, <clears throat> and part B is uh, possible awnings are disapproved. So why don't, and I'll also say, you know, subject to uh, 
awnings coming back if uh, the owner wants to do that. So why don't we vote on awnings to be disapproved? A yes is a disapproval. Okay, Elizabeth? Sorry, I don't know what. We're disapproving awnings at this time because we don't know what they Oh, look. okay, yes. Okay. Michelle? Yes. Alita? Yes. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Bill? Yes. Kimberly? Yes. Great. Okay, Jane, back to you. Oh, David, I I'm really feel I've got my work cut out for me. I'm hoping there's no new business or old business, although I, I is, is it okay to adjourn or did somebody? I, I would second adjourning. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we can leave the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Okay, see you all Wednesday. Yeah.